I want to bring in now U.S. Senator from Pennsylvania, Senator Bob Casey, a Democrat who uh, is joining us uh, from his home base to tell us about his reaction to the news. Tell us what you can. Well, thanks so much. It was a great day, I think, for the, our Commonwealth and for our country, especially the, the role that uh, Pennsylvania played in this election. And I have to commend and salute the work that was done by voters and volunteers and so many uh, others, elected officials and others, uh, the men and women of organized labor in southeastern Pennsylvania, uh, Philadelphia and Montgomery County, Bucks County, Delaware County, Chester County, really the whole region. Because without the vote there in that region, uh, Joe Biden could not have won Pennsylvania, and could not have won the presidency. So the people of southeastern Pennsylvania played not only a substantial role in this win, but a decisive role. So it's a good day for um, for our state. Senator Casey, how does how does the country, how does Pennsylvania move forward? Because uh, so many people did vote for President Donald Trump. So President-elect Joe Biden right. and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris, they have their work cut out for them. No question about it. We, we're a divided country at a time of crisis, the worst public health crisis in a century. Uh, cases rising, record cases in Pennsylvania and across the country. And unfortunately, the death number is going up. And on top of that, we have a jobs crisis. More than a half a million people in Pennsylvania are out of work. So a lot of trauma, a lot of suffering. And we need to come together as a nation to, uh, to confront those problems. Look, Joe Biden's going to have a tough job. And on some days, it won't work to unify the country. But on a lot of days, I think he can, because no one that I know in recent American history is more capable to do that, uh, more capable in doing that, and also more prepared and more determined to do that. He will work at it. Unifying the country requires hard work, and he'll put the work in to do that. But we all have an obligation as citizens. I certainly have an obligation as, a, as an elected official to help to unify our commonwealth and our country to tackle the virus and create a hell of a lot of jobs. Well, and on that note, Senator Casey, so many people across the country and in Pennsylvania are waiting on Congress to come together and, and put together some kind of a second stimulus, some kind of a relief package. Yep. What will those conversations look like with uh, Joe Biden in the White House? Well, I think, um, frankly, I think it should start next week with this Senate, this Congress, and this uh, president. Uh, I don't want to wait until Joe Biden is sworn in as president. I think we should pass a relief bill this month. Uh, What's that going to take? What will that take? Well, first of all, it takes Donald Trump helping us. He's got to he's got to tell his party, get a relief bill done in the Senate. And so the Senate majority has been sitting on their hands since May. The House passed a heroes bill back in May. And the Senate Republicans have done nothing not a blessed thing since then. They have a majority right now. They need to help us pass a relief bill. We need more money for food assistance. We need more money to get the, the death number down in nursing homes, and we know exactly how to do that. We need more money for those who are unemployed, more money for small business. We need a big bill, not a scaled down limited bill. So the same party in the Senate that rammed through a Supreme Court justice in record time needs to ram through a relief bill in record time. You say, Senator Casey, that uh, Republicans need to start working, Democrats need to start working with President-elect Joe Biden, and you don't want to wait until January until there's an inauguration. But we know right. that President Trump is, is pushing back on the results of this election. We just heard it in his latest tweet. How many of your Republican uh, colleagues in the Senate are going to stand behind him or are going to move forward and potentially work with Democrats and with uh, President-elect Joe Biden even before this election is certified, resolved, and, and we truly have a, a new president in, in, uh, inaugurated? Well, here's some really good news. <laughs> and and you might, your, your viewers might be shocked that I'm going to be so complimentary of some Republicans. But a number of leading Republicans in our state uh, have not gone along with President Trump's uh, false allegations of fraud and all the rest. So I think on that question, I think we can move forward. Uh, Joe Biden's the president-elect. He's going to be the president, no matter what Donald Trump says or does. And that's, that's good news. But we, we do have to start working together right now, because we cannot wait for the next uh, administration or the next Congress, 
because you're really talking about February, and that's that's months away. We need to get a relief bill done now, and I'm hoping we can make some progress even this month. Senator Casey, you've been an elected official of certainly your father as well for a long time. People in Pennsylvania know know you very well. Your household name. Uh, what does this What does this mean in terms of uh, the historic moment, the historic significance of having? Uh, let's talk about Vice President-elect Kamala Harris, a woman uh, who is on this ticket and who uh, and a person of color. It really is historic, and and I know Kamala as a colleague, and I think most of the nation knows her as a as an inspirational figure, a, a great uh, cross-examination or cross-examiner of witnesses and, and all of that. But I think what they're going to see in her is not just uh, the historic nature of her candidacy and her service as vice president, but someone who's a, a good colleague and will be collegial in carrying out not just Joe Biden's agenda as president, but she'll work with both parties to move the nation forward. And I think people will be uh, inspired by that kind of uh, leadership. But I have to take just a moment on Joe Biden personally. What a remarkable triumph this is. For not just to defeat an incumbent president, that's really hard to do. Uh, and I told him that today on the phone. He did a hard thing. But just the personal nature of this, this is per someone who has lost so much, has lived through so many tragedies. His son, Bo, most recently, his wife, his daughter, almost died himself a couple of times when he had an aneurysm and had other health um, scares. So th this, is a, this is a good person who has walked through a lot of tragedy and is now putting himself forward to, to lead the country. We're grateful that he did that, but uh, we're also grateful that the country can be so affirmative about um, some, electing someone who you know, will put decency ahead of demonization. So. Uh, it's going to be hard to unify the country, but he'll work at it every day. Senator Casey, tell us more about that conversation. When did you talk to President-elect Joe Biden? If you know, where was he? What, what did you two say to each other? Well, he was in Delaware, and he was calling me just to thank me and to, to, to uh, commend and salute the work that uh, so many did in Pennsylvania to help him get elected. But uh, it was a, he was in Delaware, but it was a, just a nice conversation between two old friends. And I was... Uh, thanking him for running and for taking on such a tough assignment at a tough time, a time of crisis for our country. We, we kidded a little bit about some of the superstitions that we were both um, uh, remembering or, or, or uh, being governed by an election day. He came to Scranton and I know to Philadelphia later in the day, but he made a stop at his own, the, the house that he grew up in for the first 10 years of his life. But I asked his campaign team to, to if they could just to say if you could say hello to my mother on the way to his house because it, <laughs> it, it's only it's within the same um, about three blocks away and you know his campaign team the traveling team didn't even ask him they just went to the secret service and said can we make this stop <laughs> now, i would have i would have been ha and i was superstitious i wanted him to say hello to my mother because they've known each other for 40 years but i was worried that well he won't be able to do it, or if he does, I'm going to slow things down. So all, all I asked from his team was just have him get out of the car and wave and just get back in the car and he can go on his way. Well, being Joe Biden, the car stopped. He got out of the car, went over to my mother and grabbed her by her arms. And he had a mask on. He was being careful. I was there. But it was a nice moment. And uh, once in a while, it's not bad to be a little su superstitious. <laughs> Senator Casey, before we let you go, as you said, you described Joe Biden as an old friend. What kind of a president will he be? I think he'll be um, a president who will lead with not only his experience, but his empathy. Uh, not only his decency, which everyone is well familiar with, but also his determination. Determination to lead the country, to move us forward, to get put this virus behind us, uh, but also to work on an economic strategy that will lift people up. So he'll be a president we can be proud of every day. Even folks who don't agree with his policies, I think will we'll appreciate his, his decency, his care for the country. Senator Bob Casey, U.S. Senator representing Pennsylvania, Democratic Senator, and as he said, a good old friend of uh, an old friend of Joe Biden, the president-elect. We appreciate you taking the time and, and talking to us this afternoon. Thanks very much for the time.
Stay informed with the latest news, weather, and important in-depth journalism from NBC10 and Telemundo 62 with our free Roku and Apple TV apps. Download them today in the App Store.